Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to look at the advanced aspects of the photoelectric effect, which is part of the particles and radiation topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at, how, at understanding what the photoelectric effect is. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to describe the photoelectric effect, explain the terms work function and stopping potential, and then finally analyze the photoelectric equation and calculate the maximum kinetic energy of emitted electrons, which is part of the following bit of the AQA A-level physics specification, 3.2.2.1, the photoelectric effect. Now, the consequence of the photoelectric effect is electrons are emitted from the surface of a metal. So when photons are shined on a surface, electrons can be emitted. Now, the true name for the emitted electrons is photoelectrons, electrons produced by the photons of light. Now, the electrons have a kinetic energy, but how can we measure the individual kinetic energy of the electrons? Well, Whilst we know the electron's mass, the speed of the individual electrons is difficult to measure. So we must use another property of the electrons. Now the electrons are moving in a current off the surface of the metal. Now it's important to note that the kinetic energy of the electrons emitted is manifested as an electrical current because electrical current is the rate of flow of charge of the electrons in a particular direction. Now if we place a negative charge at the opposite end to the metal surface, this will repel the electrons. So the negative charge is provided by placing a potential difference across the material and this will happen because the electrons are negatively charged so therefore they would be repelled by another negative charge so placing a negative charge to the opposite end of the metal surface will cause the electrons to stop moving and when this happens the current red would drop to zero so this means a reading on any ammeter in an electrical circuit would drop to zero so what we can suggest is that the kinetic energy store of the emitted electrons is transferred transferred into an electrical potential energy store. Work is being done. Now, if we assume that there's no energy dissipated in this process of work being done, we can equate the two energy stores. So we can say that the kinetic energy of the photoelectron is equal to the electrical potential energy of the photoelectron. Now, from GCSE physics, we know an equation to calculate kinetic energy, a half times by mass times by velocity squared. But there is an equation from A level physics which allows you to calculate the electrical potential energy which is equal to the charge times by the potential difference. Now as the charge of the particle here is the charge of the electron we can write the charge as E which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So if we equate the two particular equations we can say a half mv squared is equal to EV where the big V is the, is the potential difference needed to stop the electrons. Now we give that a particular name which is called the stopping potential. So we can say that a half mv squared is equal to E times by Vs, the stopping potential. So, to summarise, the, elect the ejected electrons can be stopped by applying a potential difference to oppose their motion as they are charged objects. Now, the potential difference which will stop the electrons from moving is called the stopping potential. So, we can say that the maximum kinetic energy is equal to E, the charge on an electron in coulombs, times by Vs, the stopping potential in volts. Now, remember, E, the charge of an electron, is always 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Now, this does assume that the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons is a maximum value. So we are assuming that the stopping potential will stop all of the electrons. But we can use this equation to work out the maximum kinetic energy of our electrons. So we can use this concept to write the original photoelectric effect equation in a new way. So last time we said that the the photon energy, which is equal to HF, is equal to the work function plus the kinetic energy, which is a half mv squared. But we can substitute the stop and potential term into the kinetic energy term because they are equal to each other. So we can say now that the photon energy is equal to HF, which is equal to the work function plus E times by Vs, where Vs is the stopping potential. So we can also, if we want to... Um, 
really consider how to write this, we can we can substitute the threshold frequency concept into the work function term as they are equal to each other again. So we can say now that E equals HF, which equals HF0, where F0 is the threshold frequency, the photon frequency needed to overcome the work function, plus E times by Vs, the stopping potential. Now, when analyzing the photoelectric effect in experimentation, we can graph the various quantities in this concept. So we can measure the kinetic energy of the electrons via the stop and potential concept when the photon frequency is altered. So we can do this with the following piece of apparatus. So what we can do is we can look at this particular piece of kit. So what we've got here is we have a, a variable DC supply, we have the metal surface with the frequency hitting upon it, and we have a voltmeter and we have an ammeter. Now we can alter the photon frequency by shining lights of different colour on the surface of the metal. The intensity of the light would not affect the results achieved, but what we can do is we can measure the kinetic energy of the electrons with the monitoring of the stop and potential on the voltmeter. So the stop and potential will be the value of the potential difference which will cause the electrons to stop flowing. So this will cause the current in the circuit to be zero. So to find the stopping potential, you would alter the PD and record the value of PD which causes the current to be zero on the ammeter. The stopping potential can then be used to calculate the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons with our previous equation. Now when analysing this particular effect in experimentation, we can measure the kinetic energy of the electrons, we can measure the photon frequency, and we should find that the greater the photon frequency, the greater the energy inputted into the surface, the greater the emitted kinetic energy of the electrons. So as a result, we will get the following straight line on our graph. Now the graph the graph line does not intersect at the origin due to the work function of the metal because you've got to give that metal a certain amount of energy before any electrons are emitted. So what that means is we can extrapolate the line back to determine the work function of the metal, which is the y-intercept. So if we consider that this is a straight line graph and that the equation for a straight line graph is y equals mx plus c, and we know that on the y-axis there is the kinetic energy, and we know on the x -axis axis there is the frequency. As a result, we can change our photoelectric equation to be kinetic energy is equal to HF minus the work function. So therefore, Y equals MX plus C. So that tells us a couple of factors. Firstly, it tells us that the um, that the gradient of the line m in the y equals mx plus c equation is equal to Planck's constant h. And we can also tell from this that the x value, the x-intercept, will be the threshold frequency. The frequency to overcome the work, that will provide the energy to overcome the work function of the metal. So this would mean that all metals will produce lines of best fit of the same gradient as each other because the gradient is the Planck's constant, which is a constant for all different metals. Metals. So we can use the kinetic energy frequency graph to work out the following properties. The gradient of our line is Planck's constant, the y-intercept is the negative work function, and the x-intercept is the threshold frequency. Now we can then use the graph from investigations to determine the properties of the photoelectric effect. So to summarise what we've looked at in today's lesson, we've looked at threshold frequency and a photon explanation of threshold frequency. We've looked at work function and stopping potential and looked at the equation HF is equal to the work function plus the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we can describe the photoelectric effect. We can explain the terms work function and stopping potential. And finally, we can analyse the photoelectric equation and calculate the maximum kinetic energy of emitted electrons. So we've enjoyed today's lesson where we've looked at advanced topics in the photoelectric effect, which is part of the particles and radiation topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for listening and have a lovely day.